Welcome back. This video is about my newest hobby slash obsession, which is this thing. This is an iPod Classic. More specifically, this is the 5.5 generation or generation 5 enhanced. This thing, little, this little sucker came out in two, late 2005 slash 2006 ish. I don't know the exact year it came out. However, the reason why I got an iPod and more specifically this specific generation of iPod is number one, I wanted a, you know, a, a dedicated music player. And I know there are a lot of dApps out there, digital audio players out there. However, I really like the iPod and the upgradability of it in 2024, which is, wow, this thing came out 20, almost 20 years ago. That's crazy. So now why the 5.5 generation? Well, to a lot of people, the 5.5 generation has the best um, DAC and amp. Well, maybe just the DAC on board. It has the Wolfson DAC, which um, a lot of people say that is the, the sound signature is tuned more uh, warmly compared to the other ones. Some of the, especially the later generations like sixth and the seventh generation iPods, they may sound a little too cold. They may, you know, uh, yeah, I never tried it myself. That's just what people say on Reddit. So 5.5, the reason why a lot of people like this 5.5 Wolfson DAC is because it sounds the warmest and it sounds the best to most people. That's why this one is the most desirable. Now, price-wise, I got this particular one. This one is in very, very good condition, uh, used obviously on eBay for $60, including shipping. Now you can probably find it between 20 to $60, maybe on Facebook, on eBay, or even locally from your thrift stores. You can do that. And also this is the 30 gig version, which um, is called the thin version. And the 60 or 80, was it 80 or 60? The other version has a thicker back case, which is this shiny part right here. So this is the thin version, 30 gigabyte. And that's that, this is my new obsession. Yeah, I, I realized that I wanted more single use, well not single use, but single function uh, devices. You know, right now we have, we have our phones here. It does about a, a billion things you can do with it. And there's a lot of distraction around. So I wanted something that's not connected to the internet and which has its downsides, you one can argue. And you know, it's just does one thing and one thing only, and it does a pretty damn good job at it, which is why I got this. So the reason of this video is not for me to just boast about my new iPod. No, it's actually, uh, I'm going to be upgrading it. So I found out that the uh, modding community for all these iPod classics from generation one to generation seven or eight, whatever, whichever one the last one is, has been very, it has been growing a lot. And now that it's 2024, there are software mods, hardware mods from, you know, upgraded storage to face place, cosmetic things, everything. So this is what I decided to do. I like the Apple, um, let's unlock it. I like the UI. You know, it's simple, it does one thing, it just works, right? And, and that's what I want, as opposed to like a Fio or some um, other brand uh, dApps. I, I like this, this is nice. So in this video, I'm going to be upgrading the storage. So many, as you guys will know, all these came with a physical hard drive, it's about yay big, and it's an actual physical mechanical hard drive, uh, mechanical. Sorry, not physical. Well, it's physical, but mechanical hard drive, it spins, which one, limited storage, two, there's a chance of failure. So we want to eliminate that by using this thing. Oh, shoot, I didn't even take it out. This is what's called an iFlash. And the one I got is the iFlash Quad, which means that it takes four micro SD cards. There's also a M.2 version. There's also a SATA um, one. There's also a regular SD card, just a regular size. There's also a CF card, all kinds of different storage um, 
methods that you can use, but I've chosen this iFlash quad for my use case. And to go in the iFlash quad, I've gotten myself some Samsung micro SD cards. And I bought these um, in a physical brick and mortar store because there's less chance of uh, you know, getting a fake one. A lot of people have experienced that although they've ordered the item through Amazon and it was sold and shipped by Amazon, they still received a fake SD card as in it says it's SanDisk, for example, and it's actually not a real SanDisk card and the performance and reliability are not up to par. So, which is why I went to Micro Center, uh, the best place on earth, Micro Center and I got these. Fun fact, Micro Center matches with Amazon, price matches with Amazon as long as it's sold by Amazon, shipped and sold by Amazon. So if you want things, you know, really quick, same day, and you want to have the peace of mind that you're getting the legit stuff, go to Micro Center. Who doesn't love Micro Center? Anyway, 256 gigabytes, two of them, which makes it 512 gigabytes. Why didn't I go with four one terabyte um, SD cards? Well, there, since, since these things are so old, there's a storage limit on these. The motherboard only has so much RAM, right? The 30 gigs has, I think, 64, 32 megabytes of RAM. I, I don't know, don't quote me on that. And the 80 gig version has slightly more RAM. However, the hard storage limit is about, for these ones, for the 30 gig motherboard, is about 20,000 songs. I don't know. All I know is that if you have over 10,000 songs on there, it's not going to be able to shuffle all the songs because there's, it's just the way these softwares are built. They have to generate the whole entire queue of songs. And if you have over that many songs in high quality, um, just not gonna work. It's just gonna freeze up on you and skip songs and do all that. That's where a lot of people run into trouble. So for me, after some research, I found that just staying around the one terabyte, that's like the very high extreme um, in terms of storage size. So I've opted for a you know 512 to start with and I have the option to upgrade if I ever need so in the future. Next up is this little thing. Um, as you know, people know that the batteries on these things, it's again, it's been 20 years since this thing was new. So the battery isn't, you know, at 100% or even at 50%, right? I've I listened to, I've used this for about four hours today and uh, it's already almost dead. So this is a new battery. This is a thin version. It is the 3,000 3000, 3, milliamp thin battery. There's a lot of batteries on the market. Um, if you check out uh, Elite Obsolete Electronics, EOE, his website or his YouTube channel, he has mostly all the battery configurations up for sale. And he did an amazing video on the fitment on each generation of iPod, each iFlash board, and each of these batteries. Uh, you know, there are 800 milliamps, 2,800 milliamps, 3,000 milliamps, and 3,800 milliamps. I opted with the 3,000 milliamps, which, you know, I think is enough. And this is the thin variant of this 3,000 milliamp battery, which theoretically, well, it's been proven <laughs> to fit inside the thin one with the iFlash quad. So all these things should go in here. That's what I'm gonna do. This is gonna be a long video, so please bear with me. This is the actual uh, modding part. Now, first things first, I've never opened one of these before. I don't even have the tools to open this. Um, I didn't buy the iFlash off of the official website. I got it on eBay because it was about $10 cheaper. So, uh, it didn't come with a prying tool, so I'm gonna have to improvise and hopefully not break anything on this. So, according to the installation guide on iFlash, which I will put on the screen right now, you're supposed to, uh, you know, you just pry it open. That's it. So, I'm, try I'm gonna find like a screwdriver or something and try not to break this thing. And uh, here's my attempt at modifying this. All right, according to Dankpods, 
uh, you're just, uh, you know, cut along the seam, let the tool in. Obviously, I don't have a tool, so this is going to be very... Oh, here we go. Oh, shit. I cracked it. I cracked the plastic on the side. Lesson number one, have the right tools. Okay, well, usually you can just wiggle it out, but this one is being very stubborn, which leads me to think that this one has never been opened before in its life, and it's being opened right now for the very first time. Here we go. All right, so be very careful since there are stuff connecting with these ones and what the heck how do you unplug the battery oh here it is okay hold on unplugged battery woohoo there we go i got inside my ipod thank you dank pods All right so next step would be remove the hard drive and the uh battery this battery seemed pretty good i mean i, I don't see any it's not puffy or anything however this is i don't know like 800 milliamps so it's not gonna last you as long well i don't think i'll be needing this foam padding so i'll just remove that oh dude, wait this hard drive just comes out okay i'm gonna be very careful with removing the hard drive because there is a ribbon cable there. Let me see how you remove that. Connector. Oh, you just just gotta do that. Theoretically, it should just come out. I've already m unlocked the connector. There you go. Awesome. This is the hard drive. How many? I don't. Oh, it's a Toshiba hard drive. There's some glue on it, it's making my finger sticky, but op operational 30 gig hard drive. That is crazy. That is crazy. All right, cool. So I didn't end up needing a Torx screw, which is awesome. So next thing I need to do is to remove the battery. Now, theoretically, you just kind of I shouldn't have done that with the metal screwdriver, but oh well. Here it is. The original battery looks to be in pristine condition. This one. However, we're not going to be using that because the battery life isn't as great. So time for the modification. Right. Here's our iFlash quad. opened oh hey it comes with uh, little pads one two five hundred and twelve gigabytes thirty gigabytes how have technology how technology have, have improved over 20 years is mind-boggling. Right. There's this. Now, I am going to install it like, like so. How do you install this? Install into iPod. I think it might be this way that it wants to go in. Oh, is that, was that why? Because I didn't unlock it. Aha, there you go. That's why it was so hard. Okay, now it's locked. Cool. Next thing I would need to do is install this new battery. Ta-da. All right, battery should go this way. Like that. But the cable is backwards. Hmm. Can I... T 
twist it backwards? This cable is backwards. Unless I can like fold it down like this. Okay, battery is in. That goes in like that. Actually, it fits perfect. It's a lot lighter than before. So now, uh, not gonna put it back in yet because I wanted to see if it'll boot. So let's see if it'll boot. You know what? The battery is probably dead. So I'm gonna plug this in for a little bit. Okay, so I plugged it into the wall. It says connect to your computer, use iTunes to restore. I just realized something. I plugged it into my computer, but I didn't turn on the uh, iPod. So here's what I'm gonna try uh, one more time. Now I'm going to plug it into the dongle. Oh, it's upside down. The dongle right here. Oh, do not disconnect. Here we go. We got the screen. Oh, it's popping up. Your Mac has detected an iPod in recovery mode. Yes. Let's do it. It might take a while. It might take not to... It, 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 it might not... It might not take that long of a time since we're on an iFlash instead of a regular old mechanical hard drive. All right, this is good news. This is very good news. I got... Here, after 30 minutes, I was watching <laughs> dank pods and browsing Reddit uh, on, on solutions on how to get this to work. I formatted this, I formatted each of the SD cards. Turns out you have to do that. Um, with, even with new SD cards, you should still format them and then plug it into the iFlash. This thing will go into disk mode, connect it to your Mac or your computer and then you want to go into disk utility and then format this whole iPod. It, it should show. If you've done everything correctly, it will show in disk utility the total um, storage that you have. For me, it was 512 and it showed 512 in disk utility. So what I did was I restored, um, I just formatted it again into um, whichever format that you know is there it doesn't really matter uh, you format it once that's done plug it in again and in finder or itunes it will prompt you uh, that a new ipod has been detected you have to restore it and once you click on that it takes about 15 to 20 minutes since these things are so old and these they, they can only transfer so much data um, the, the speed and um, yeah, after that, I've got this working. It booted into the iPod and now I'm going to sync my iPod. There we go, let's see, 512 gigabytes available. Yes, awesome. That's so cool. That is the coolest thing. All right. Okay, so I just put a Dark Side of the Moon album on here. Not my go-to album to listen to, but that's just what I had on my computer without my hard drive. So, still unassembled. I recommend, you know, you keep it unassembled until you, you know, you're sure that everything works. So, let's, where is the headphone jack? Here it is. Music, artists, Pink Floyd. All right, let's give it a listen. Yay. Okay. All right, how do I pause this? All right, now I know that it works. So I'm going to turn it off, put the lock on. I'm going to reassemble it. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, to reassemble this thing, let me grab some gaffer's tape. Uh, I think I'm going to do this. Oh shoot, what is this? Where did this come from? I think this goes in like... Like that, right there. Okay, cool, cool, very cool. Battery out. And 
think I'm going to make a little little divider out of gaff tape. Because who doesn't love gaff tape? Gaff tape is my favorite kind of tape. Okay, so we have a little strip of gaffer's tape uh, taped to itself. I'm going to cut it to size about this, this size. There you go. I'm going to use it as a little divider right here. Keeps it in place pretty well. There we go. Tuck this underneath. Um, I think I'm going to tape the uh, SD cards. I'm going to tape down the SD cards. Just in case, because if one of these two moves, the whole thing doesn't work. And we don't want that to happen. So... I don't know how well this is going to work. There's one. And there's the other. Cool. This eye flash isn't moving. What about this battery? I don't want it to just like be sliding around in there. You know what? Let's put it on the eye flash. Put it on here. There you go, and it should friction fit the battery. Okay, there, that goes there. That's a good sign. Nope, that's not gonna fit. Not gonna fit. So I gotta take these pads off. All right, here's some gaff tape. Put it on here. Make it a little even. Put that on there and close it up. Does it close? It does. No pressure points in the back. No weird bulges. Cool. Okay, well. There we go. And just to confirm, just kidding, where is settings? About. Boom. Look at that. All right, so that's the whole video. Um, this is my new, new iPod, new old new iPod, and it's got 512 gigabytes in it, and I can put all the music I want. And I still have two extra slots uh, to put uh, two extra SD card slots, I can I can upgrade this to even more storage. But I'm satisfied with 512. It weighs roughly the same as before, uh, slightly lighter. And um, yeah, I hope this video was helpful or at least informational. If you're looking to do this, it's not very complicated. Just make sure that you have the right tools. Um, there's instructions all over the internet, namely dank pods, um, elite obsolete electronics, and of course the iFlash website, and obviously Reddit. There's a whole lot of information out there. I'll try to link everything that I've used, all the tutorials and stuff in the description, and I'll link, uh, I'll have the iFlash link and the link of the battery that I used in the description so if you guys want to do that feel free to do that and if you have any questions or you know want to share your own experience modding ipods please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below and um yeah that's about it see you guys next time bye